Good morning. I'm Fiona and I'm from the National Centre of Biotechnology Education. We're based at the University of Reading. So today I'm going to be doing our science experiment with you for our protein module. So as I mentioned previously in um, our introductory video, you will need some fresh pineapple. It doesn't need to be a whole fresh pineapple though, just some fresh pineapple from a fruit salad or something like that is fine. Ideally some tin pineapple, if you haven't got that though you can still do the rest of the experiment. But very importantly you're going to need some jelly. Doesn't matter what kind of jelly, the flavour doesn't matter, we're not planning on actually eating it. Um, but it just needs to have gelatin in it. So if you couldn't get hold of jelly and you've got some gelatin instead, that's also great. Um, so I'm now going to cut this fresh pineapple up. If you've already got the stuff that's in a fruit salad and it's already cubed for you, you're uh, pretty much good to go. Okay, so I've set this all up now. Um, what I didn't mention was that you will need some bowls um, to obviously put your jelly and your pineapple in. And if you haven't got ones all the same like I have, it really doesn't matter. But if you do have some that are similar, then that works quite well. Okay, so I've got a bowl here for our control. So that's gonna have just jelly on its own. And this one, which has just got a little bit of fresh pineapple in, so that's just going to have a low concentration of the protease bromelain. Now, this one is going to be our high concentration of the protease bromelain, um, since it's got lots of fresh pineapple in. And here we have tin pineapple, and so we'll see if that works out any different than the fresh pineapple. So I've also got here my Pyrex jug with half a pint of boiling water, and that's ready for my jelly cubes to go into to make up my jelly. I'm just gonna add the cubes of jelly. Now, if you've got a slightly different jelly to me, that's fine, just follow the instructions of how you make it up. To dissolve our jelly. Okay, so you should then have some nice clear jelly when that has all dissolved. Right, lovely. So now we have our nicely dissolved jelly. So we are then going to add our cold water in to make it up to the right concentration. So this jelly now, as I've made it up exactly as it says on the packet, should, if I pour it into my bowl, um, let it cool down and then pop it in the fridge, it should set. So this is obviously going to be our control to make sure that I have made the jelly up properly. There we are. So that should set nicely in the fridge. So I'm then going to pour some on top of our fresh pineapple as well. So a similar amount of water I've got in my control. I'm now going to let it cool down a bit and then I'm going to pop them in my fridge. And then we will check that later to see what has happened. So jelly usually takes at least two to four hours to set. So we will um, see how they're looking later on. Okay, so while those are setting in the fridge, I thought it would be a good idea for us to go through what is actually happening and why it is relevant. So in the body then, proteases play a very important role in breaking down unwanted proteins such as proteins that have been damaged, those that maybe haven't been replicated or folded properly, or just those that are no longer needed. So collagen, which I've actually spoken about in a previous video, which is the most abundant protein in animals, when this is heated, its structure uncoils, um, the intermolecular bonds are broken, um, this is known as denaturing, um, and all proteins, if you heat them up enough, will denature. So, um, in the case of collagen, when these intermolecular bonds are broken and no longer has the nice fibrillar structure that it normally has, um, you get gelatin. So proteases, which would work on collagen, will also work on gelatin because the amino acid chains are still present. So proteases break apart the peptide bonds found in um, the polypeptide chains, so the amino acid chains. So jelly normally sets because the amino acid chains which are present um, interact with the water once it's been dissolved um, 
and they form a matrix-like structure. Now this forms by hydrogen bonds forming all the, in between all of these different chains and they start to form out of little coils and then the coils come together to form a bigger structure and a bigger structure and that is what allows the jelly to set. Now if you obviously put a protease in, um, in with the jelly it will cause the amino acid chains to be broken apart into all tiny little bits, sometimes even into probably singular amino acids. And so you're not going to have this chain-like structure that can then um, start to stick together and form a matrix. So we would hypothesize, therefore, that what is, should be going on in our fridge right now is that where fresh pineapple is present, so where this um, protease bromelain is present, it would be breaking apart all of the um, amino acid chains. And this um, would mean that the jelly won't set. We also use tin pineapple. Now, tin pineapple will have been heat treated, as all tins of food are, so that they last longer. Um, now, um, heat treating a protease will inactivate it. Um, and so therefore you would hypothesize that with tin pineapple it should set, um, because the bromelain should no longer be um, able to break apart the chains, and therefore you would still get your matrix-like structure forming. So, um, if, if we are right, and you like jelly, and you've used clean bowls and things, then that might be a nice little afternoon snack for you to have. Um, brilliant. So that is the science then, that what is going on in your fridge right now, while hopefully our jelly is setting or not setting, depending on our conditions. So, let's get our results. So I've got our four jelly conditions out of the fridge now. Um, so let's see what's happened. So as we would expect then, our control jelly, if we made up correctly, would be set now. So this has been in the fridge for four hours. So let's have a look then. Yep, definitely jelly. So this, you can see, is very much formed its solid matrix now. So the gelatin has um, interacted with the water molecules, it's made some little pockets. Um, in between its um, amino acid chains and has formed some bonds and made a um, matrix-like structure. So definitely our control is has formed um, what we would know as jelly. Now then, let's see what's happened, even with a small amount of fresh pineapple. So this is containing the protease bromelain, as I discussed earlier. Definitely not form jelly. So can you see that this is still very much just a liquid? So that bromelain then has broken up all these amino acid chains, which has um, meant that the jelly cannot form its matrix structure. And obviously, therefore, if it's happened when we've only got a little bit of pineapple, it's obviously going to also be the case when we've got a lot of pineapple present. So this is just completely still liquid. Definitely no matrix formed at all. Okay, so let's have a look then at the tin pineapple. So we were hypothesizing then that this would set like the control would because there shouldn't be any bromelain present because the tin pineapple had been heat treated, which would inactivate the bromelain. And yes, it looks like we were right. Definitely formed the gelatin um, matrix structure. Um, allowing the jelly to set. So there we go then, that is a NCB um, at home science experiment. Um, hopefully you'll join us again for um, more um, educational videos and um, experiments that you can do at home. Thank you.